Hello everyone, welcome back and thank you all so much for being here and for your continued support or for being here if it's your first time here as well. So before we get into it, I'm just letting you know as a little reminder that I am giving personal readings. So if you are interested in one of those, feel free to send me an email. That info is down below in the description box. So with that out of the way, what we're doing in today's video is a pick a card to see what needs your focus and attention right now. So I've gone ahead and shuffled your tarot cards and we have three groups to choose from. So let's go ahead and get into your group selection. So for group one, we have green calcite. Next for group two, if I can keep the card straight, <laughs> we've got some carnelian. I really wanted to go with the raw crystals today. All right. And last but not least, for group three, we have some amethyst. All right, so as always, this is a general reading, so make sure to take what resonates, leave what does not, and use your intuition and discernment throughout the reading. If you need more time to choose a group or multiple groups, if that's what's resonating, feel free to take as much time as you need, and I will start with group one. Hello, group one. Those of you who chose the green calcite, let's see, let, let's see what needs your focus and attention right now. So with your tarot, we have the 10 of cups. Beautiful. We've got the knight of pentacles. Nice. Your cards are pretty nice, group one. We've got the six of cups. And then we have the eight of pentacles. And last but not least, <laughs> at all, we have the Empress. So it's interesting because we've got cups, pentacles, cups, pentacles, and then the Empress here. So I'm definitely seeing that the overall energy that you would be like best suited to stay in overall right now would be the Empress energy, which is of receiving self-love, self-care, focusing on your beauty. It's not... And I mean beauty in all, all senses. I don't mean in a purely superficial whatever way. But there's definitely a lot about balance here, but it's balance with you receiving. So if you're used to being like go, go, go and doing and work and practice and go to school and all this stuff, <laughs> and you're always doing and doing and doing, this is your time of receiving. So this could be with what needs your focus and attention if you know that you have things in life that you could be appreciating more, including yourself, if you know that even though you've got a lot on your plate and a busy schedule between your relationships and work, family, whatever it is that you do, um, I don't mean like work specifically only in a job way, but if you have like a creative talent, that can be work as well, even if you're not doing it for money, because Eight of Pentacles is what we pour that... um like very mundane time energy, you know, your sweat and time <laughs> into like just doing the work. So that's all within balance here. Like there's a focus on family and really beautiful close connections. And then there's also this focus on whatever you're building over the long term, being very patient, just putting in the mundane, almost like, you know, that stuff that's less glamorous, that stuff that's more boring. Like if you have a creative talent, as I said, just as an example, but this is putting in those hours of practice. This is putting in those hours of study and just doing the mundane, like the repetition. I need to get up and make this and do this and do that. And then also there's a focus on this, like if you have children, the Six of Cups will be saying that we're factoring those children into that. Or if you have like nieces and nephews you take care of. But this could also be addressing your inner child, <laughs> really nurturing your child self, especially if, you know, it's next to the Empress. If there's anything coming through regarding your relationship with your mother or if in general you just feel like you would like to spend more time receiving and if you feel like there's a connection between your relationship receiving now, being able to relax now, being able to feel beautiful, to be able to feel beautiful and worthy no matter what you're doing, 
group one, if you know what I mean, some of us have wounds surrounding that. Like if you have to feel like, or if you feel like you've got to like every day get up and prove that you deserve to feel good, that you deserve to have nice things, that you deserve to be treated well, I feel like you are making so much progress with that. And the thing that would need your attention, just take this part if it resonates, is definitely if you're listening to this and realize that there's a connection there between some past relationship, your child self, or your relationship with like a parental figure, most likely your mother because it is the empress. Now let's see what's coming through. I'm a little out of breath, group one. But I feel like there's a lot of increase. There is going to be a lot to be grateful for. So take that part as it resonates. If this is about you getting into that empress state and then being open to receiving those positive things when they come through. <laughs> Excuse me if you can hear that, I think fire truck. Um, or if this is about things that are already here, like if you know you've just had a hard time being in the moment, but you're sitting here like, you know what, I do have good connections and I'm proud of the work I've done, even if I'm not 100% there yet, even if you don't have all the business, all the money, all the abundance, you feel like you want to be better at what you do. But we're at the night stage here. So there has been work, there has been development, there has been progress, and that's something to be proud of. And almost kind of like take this moment of rest. I feel like that's the next that's the next area of growth is in receiving and enjoying the things that you've created enjoying the progress that you've made because you're not this version of you anymore there's parts of that version of you but you've grown you've grown and matured and you've developed new skills you've been through different connections you're probably a lot more clear on what you want in your close lasting relationships let me see what else is coming through now if there is something because we're in that eight of pentacles energy too and that's sticking out because it's next to the empress so it's is probably saying that we want to really come back to that empress energy and not overwork yourself but at the same time you know life is going to do the life thing and even if we're say focusing on relaxing into our relationships there may be ways that we want to show up for those people whether this is your parents like maybe some of you it's not that black and white and maybe you are trying to rekindle some kind of relationship with parents or go deeper with your parents, get a more substantial emotional connection, but maybe that's taking work. Or if this is your partner and you're trying to go to that next level with them, you're trying to get a deeper connection with them, but that's taking work. Like if you are uncomfortable just being in the moment of receiving compliments, of receiving someone's time and energy without feeling like you've got to like go that extra mile every two seconds. This is giving the energy of maybe some of you struggle with receiving compliments and nice things. So if you are meeting people who are either like in your life right now or they're kind of coming through soon, because if, if this is resonating, we wouldn't really have all these beautiful like Ten of Cups, Empress, and this Knight of Pentacles, a really steady, consistent figure is coming through here who's really going to show up for you over and over and over again in a very tangible way. This is like we're walking the walk. <laughs> we're not just talking the talk. Knight of Pentacles. And I feel that you're coming through with this energy too. I feel like, again, it's about the balance. It's about the give and take. That's the best way I can put it is be open to receiving if someone's constantly proving to you that they're exactly, you know, that they're a healthy relationship and be open to receiving when that's time, but also open to like not feeling like it's a bad thing to put in the effort you know a lot of times we feel like I feel like in a lot of these like more woo woo spiritual places we can almost feel like if you take what people say too literally it can seem like too much effort is a bad thing like let's say there's a an issue here that you want to work out and maybe it's just a difference like for example, if you're a morning person and they're a night person and we want to like put in effort to make that work, that would not necessarily be a bad thing. That's kind of what I'm saying there. <laughs> so group one, I think that's what's coming through for you. There's a lot of balance between the mundane, work, whatever it is you pour your energy and practice into, 
and then maybe some past healing, releasing some things that happened with receiving and childhood, if that's resonating with you or with a parent. And then really there's a focus on receiving and enjoying in your relationship. So that looks pretty nice. <laughs> there could be financial increase here if you are growing a business or if you are, um, you know, again, whether this is for money or not, if you're growing in your craft, if you're growing in whatever you would define as your field, there will be growth. But that growth with the Pentacles energy is usually not some drastic, like, think of like growing something over time and getting consistent, like you get a really good, if you're like, you have your own business, you get a client who comes back over and over and over again, they're in there a, a few times a week versus you you post and you're trending and it has a huge reach for one day so your shop is really really busy that day but none of those people ever come back pentacles is the first one where you're building one at a time but they're coming back over and over and over again it's a steady stream of abundance it's going to be much more predictable where you pour in this energy you're working pretty hard but it has a payoff it has a steady stable payoff that keeps coming back so I think that's why we need to balance this out because that eight of pentacles is there but also being ready to receive when those rewards come your way wow that message really wanted to come through at the end didn't it <laughs> so that is what I have for you group one thank you so much relax into this empress energy sometimes we need to relax <laughs> we really do especially with that that pentacles energy. You definitely deserve some relaxation here and some good connections. So that is what I have for you, group one. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Hello, group two. Those of you who chose the carnelian, let's see what needs your focus and attention right now. So we've got the four of cups, and we've got the high priestess. Ooh. Okay, I like your cards. Very like mystical, very interesting. We have the world. We have the queen of swords and the wheel of fortune. Okay. So with the world here, that's what's really calling my attention is that in the grand scheme of things, as well as that wheel of fortune, this is definitely going to be a more substantial time of your life in a very positive way. I know it doesn't always seem that way because we've got that Four of Cups, we've got the High Priestess, and then I see you sitting very comfortably in this Queen of Swords energy, which we will get to. It's really like very empowered, very good at setting strong mental boundaries with yourself and others. So let's get into that. It looks like this is just going to be something that's a little hidden, a little unexpected when it comes through it's going to seem like a sudden faded change whether you believe in fate and divine timing and blah blah all that good stuff or you believe in free will or you believe in both this is something that's just going to seem almost out of nowhere even though with the world card I see there's been like a long journey to get there <laughs> so you can look at it however you want to look at it you might want to look at it as being a bit of both somewhere in that crossroads or just one of those hard to understand big changes in life but with the wheel of fortune it's saying that there's a positive change coming that's in your favor that's just overwhelmingly pleasant but it might be a big shift. That's kind of what I'm getting with this with all the major energy. I'm just interpreting that from all the majors here is that this could just feel like a really big shift that maybe you have to settle into. Like the best example I can give is, um, for example, if you just got like a huge raise or a huge promotion at work that you've been working for for a really long time, you've been steady, you've been consistent, you've been showing up as your best self, but then when it comes through, it's still somehow unexpected. It's still somehow like, okay, now I have to adjust to having more abundance and like how much can I spend? How much should I be saving? Where those are all positive changes, right? But suddenly it's, it gives you some stuff to think about, if that makes sense. With the world here, whatever you feel this last chapter, this last cycle of lessons and whatever trials you've been through, 
we're getting to the point where we can close that door, we can close that old cycle, and then we can kind of reap the rewards of that. So for example, if you were learning lessons about setting mental boundaries, because it is that queen of swords, <laughs> this is definitely the power of the mind, the power of your intellect, your intelligence of when there's a time and place to be in our emotions, but there's a time and place to put them inside and say, what are the facts? Let me actually just kind of see clearly what's right in front of me. And I also feel with a strong intuition, it's almost like you're learning lessons and reaping rewards from the fact that you're learning how to separate your mind from your emotions and your intuition. And that doesn't mean you're becoming a cold person just as much as it doesn't mean you're becoming like a wishy-washy, overly like letting your emotions completely rule you. I feel like you're going to know when it's when it's time to put those aside and when it's time to have a balance and then when it's time to be more on the emotional side, to be more on the intuitive side and just follow what you're feeling, follow what your intuition is telling you. And I think that's going to help you because sometimes with that four of cups, there will be something that's right outside of your vision, right outside of your reach. And let's say you keep trying to read on it. You keep trying to read with your cards <laughs> and you're like, I can't get an answer. I can't get an answer. But then once you get out of that mode and you let your brain, that beautiful, smart, intelligent brain, and you're like, wait, <laughs> if I just look at the facts, I can see where this is going. I can see what I need to do. Maybe I've been through a similar scenario before and this would just be the most intelligent choice for me to make, even if I'm not 100% sure. I'm seeing like what needs your focus right now is this time and place energy. This reads to me a lot as when, you know, some people say that their fear gets in the way of them reading their intuition. And I feel like if that's been a problem for you, that is going to be much less of a problem for you. You're going to be very good at having enough control and understanding. I almost want to say it as understanding instead of control, but enough understanding of how your mind works that you can trust your intuition when you need or want to just follow your intuition if you're a very spiritual person, because this would be kind of difficult. It's, what is that, <laughs> Spider-Man? When, when they say with great power comes great responsibility, but almost like great struggles. You know, a lot of very intelligent people have a lot of struggles when it comes to their mind because your mind's so powerful. It's like, it's very easy for that to accidentally get turned against you and you start overthinking and then you start going deeper and deeper and deeper when it's like harder to just enjoy a simple moment, if that makes sense. So I feel like all that to say, <laughs> whatever the most recent struggles with that balance have been, you're coming out of those so you can reap some rewards for that. Whether that's just your overall mental well-being, I'm feeling like group two, at least one of those, is feeling less like these are fighting each other, if that makes sense. Because so often people who are like, have a strong mind, but also a strong intuition, it's like, which one do I listen to? And when's the time and place? I feel like you're getting the discernment to know how to use these both together or use each one when it's time. And I feel like I'm talking about this a lot, but if you're really vibing with this group too, I probably don't, <laughs> I probably don't actually have to explain it as deeply and going around in circles trying to make sure you understand it because you're coming through as the Queen of Swords <laughs> and the High Priestess. So you probably already knew where this was going and you probably already understood it from the first sentence. So when this Wheel of Fortune change comes through, I feel like this is a new era of things feeling a little easier for you, a little less like you're pushing or like different parts of you are battling themselves, trying to see who's coming out on top and more like, wow, this is a way for these parts of me to work together for my mind and my heart and my soul and my body to really be integrated. And then, I mean, all of this really says that I feel like you're also making peace with those things that just can't be seen no matter how hard you try to push, no matter how hard you try 
to, you know, get a read on it, to use your pendulum, use your cards, use whatever divination system, ask for messages in your dreams. Like there may be some things that remain hidden for whatever, like we just don't know everything group two. I feel like that may be something this next, this next chapter of really integrating your wisdom is really accepting and like owning the fact that we don't know everything. I feel like this next chapter, you're having a super open mind and being really at peace, knowing that just because you don't have the answer to something doesn't mean you're unintelligent, doesn't mean you're not intuitive, doesn't mean you're not deep, like doesn't mean you're, I mean, I said not deep, but it doesn't mean you're shallow. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's like, you know what? I don't know that yet. I don't know the answer to that yet. I haven't seen how that's going to work out. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll meditate on it. Maybe I'll think on it. Maybe I'll journal on it, but I really don't know the answer. <laughs> and group two, also maybe not feeling like you have to know everything. Not feeling like just because you don't know the answer to something, like let's say you're asking yourself a lot of philosophical questions or what's my purpose? Why am I here? Why did I make these connections? What's the lesson of it all? It's really ironic that I say, what's the lesson of it all? Well, we talked about that <laughs> in your world card. But maybe understanding like, can I, can I take a second to just come out of that and to just experience this and to not overthink and to not go too far in a deep, like psychological deep dive into my soul and just kind of like say, huh, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. <laughs> because try as you may, like this wheel of fortune, even if it's in your favor and you can sort of get an intuitive understanding of that, usually it still feels like it came out of nowhere. And if you have a really tight grip on how things are gonna unfold, I've, I've heard people talk about this a lot with manifestation. And that's something that, again, I'm not sure where I land on that. And I'm sure there's a lot of nuance to that. And that's exactly kind of what's coming through is some people say, oh, you need to be very, very specific. You need to be so freaking specific, but then also release expectations. And those seem contradictory. Where's the gray area? But then it, it's going to come through how it's going to come through anyway. <laughs> so you're like sitting here overthinking and revisiting it over and over again. You're putting all this energy into it and then it unfolds and it's almost like, well, that was going to come through how it wanted to anyway. <laughs> so what went on there with those Wheel of Fortune things? Whereas maybe this kind of world energy payoff I see this as representing the things that you have more control over, that you learned your lessons to the best of your ability, you tried to wrap your head around it, you got an understanding, you integrate that, you stand in your power, you grow spiritually, even when it's confusing, even when with that Four of Cups energy, you're like, I'm not sure where this is headed, but I'm trying my best as things come to me. Those moments in life where you deal with whatever comes your way, but it's it's almost hard to understand where it's headed until you get to the end of that cycle and you get that payoff. And then hindsight is twenty twenty. I'm seeing you in some kind of scenario like that where you felt like you were walking through a fog so you couldn't see this issue until it showed up. But then you dealt with it. <laughs> you put your feelings of this isn't fair, this shouldn't happen, whatever it is, I wish life was easier aside and said, well, this is the hand that I'm dealt, so I will deal with it. I will take like responsibility or accountability or whatever was appropriate and then just kind of keep on going versus there's some things that just come through sometimes. It's like you pour your energy into all these other areas. Let's say you're trying so hard to work on building your abundance, building your finances or just work on yourself and then like this friendship appears out of nowhere. Um, you suddenly have just this huge understanding of your intuition that comes out of nowhere while you're focusing on something else. It's a really interesting energy to be in <laughs> because group two, I feel like there are some things that you're already really focused on. If I could, because I'm reading the energy here and I'm trying to think of how to apply it to the question of what needs your focus and attention Definitely focus on understanding your mind and how your mind works as well as setting mental boundaries with yourself. 
but I'm also seeing like setting mental boundaries and energetic boundaries with other people would be very important for you. Because if you are very energetically sensitive, that's something I'm getting from that high priestess energy is you don't want to take on too much of other people's stuff, let's call it, <laughs> other people's issues are almost like having such an open mind that you could almost just take on somebody else's, like they're overthinking something, so now you're overthinking. But coming into that conversation, you were pretty solid. Like you've done a, a good amount of time thinking about what your opinions are and who you are as a person. So not letting other people's doubts make you doubt. Not letting other people's negative emotions you know, make you take those on and suddenly you are having the best like freaking day of your life, but then someone around you is sad. So if you don't have those emotional boundaries, those energetic boundaries as an empathic person. So there's a lot here about understanding yourself, your boundaries, your spiritual development, having that all like, especially the brain, the mind and your intuition. Those are the ones that are coming through the strongest that are really growing and are really helping each other right now. I feel like this is one that I could keep talking about every nuance, every corner of it, but I think this is gonna be an individual journey, honestly, for group two, because we have some grand cycle here and then we have some seemingly unexpected faded change that you're pouring the right energy into to make it happen, but you almost might not even know what it is yet until it comes through. And I don't know either. <laughs> All I know is that with the world and the Wheel of Fortune, it's going to be like a huge blessing. And it may be in two specific, very different areas. Like you've been pouring into your business and that one makes sense. You've been learning all these lessons. Wow, that's amazing. But then suddenly you've been confused about how to, how to trust your intuition. And it's been hard to set mental boundaries and to not overthink. And then after all this work and not seeing any progress, suddenly you wake up one day and it just feels better. And you never go back to the way things were in a very, very positive way. That's kind of, that's the best way I can interpret that. That's what I'm seeing here because I mean, four of cups, there are gonna be some things that try as you may right now, what's the detail, what's the detail? Who's it gonna be? How much money am I gonna get? It's like, it's just out of reach. And it might be just out of reach for a reason. <laughs> So that is what I have for you, group two. I love these kinds of readings. It's a challenge. So thank you so much for coming through group two, and I will see you next time. Hello, group three. Last but not least, those of you who chose the amethyst, let's see what needs your focus and attention right now. So very different groups between one and two. So we'll see how your goes, yours goes as well. We have the page of swords. And we have the King of Swords here. Okay, that's beautiful. We have the Three of Cups, Seven of Wands, and then the Eight of Cups. So this is really interesting because I'm kind of seeing this for you, Group 3, not to sound too woo-woo, <laughs> but I'm seeing this as like, a conversation like learning from each other of you and a younger version of yourself where we look at that younger and I don't even see it as 100% like your three-year-old child self unless that's what resonates if you feel like you know what I've been revisiting an old time in my life like group one had the six of cups so we were revisiting the past but for you having the page of swords and the king of swords I'm specifically getting like this dialogue between you and your younger self. And we've got the Page of Swords and the Three of Cups. So I feel like that younger self definitely wants to come out and have some fun to enjoy some like lighthearted fun, maybe even social time if it's with the right group. But I'm just seeing with Three of Cups, this energy of celebration, of enjoyment, of lightness, of fun. So this could even be what needs your focus and attention right now is revisiting a specific thing that used to bring you a lot of joy as a child that has come through a little bit in a couple readings recently if that resonates if you were in those definitely <laughs> i mean if you're getting that message over and over you might want to you might want to take that because i'm seeing a lot of like inner child healing here but 
also integrating where we can look at like what were those things that were actually a good thing like if you were quirky if you were really curious this would be the kind of child who was asking a lot of questions because they wanted to understand because they were curious how does this person live like why does this person act like that and sometimes you know we get older we get a little cranky <laughs> and we take questions as almost accusations like why are you doubting me why are you judging me versus this child view is like i'm just curious i'm just i'm curious how the world works i'm curious how people work i'm curious why does this person enjoy alone time but this person enjoys being really really social so i feel like even if you didn't vibe with that oh i'm not going to revisit my favorite show or game from from being a child or if you had some kind of artistic talent or it's just about that curiosity that's what i'm really seeing here is a very open broad like this is just new year new me like i'm just going in with a very open mind trying to grow trying to expand trying to learn and experience new things energy and then from that with a really open mind i mean we do have the seven of wands <laughs> kind of in between them so that's really reading to me is when life seems stacked against you you're going to stick to what you believe at the end of the day we're being curious but we've developed into that king of swords so we can grow but there are some things here that you're not really wanting to budge on right now and that's okay <laughs> like hopefully we're not being too judgmental but if it's the king of swords you know usually we've got some kind of reason there where you've spent a lot of time being open-minded asking questions trying to learn how things work and get your individual understanding of it all while trying to have a little fun and then if this is something that's important to you, you are going to fight for that. You are going to stick by that. And that's kind of how you're going to live your life. <laughs> you know, like sometimes it's time to be like almost like malleable, but in a very positive way. And then other times it's like, think of like a positive stereotypical grandparent figure. It was like, no, I don't want to do that no that's not something i'm gonna enjoy no you go and have fun where they're not being mean they're not being judgmental they're just saying you know what that's not something i enjoy so i'm going to opt out of that <laughs> i've tried it before and it's not for me so i see a really strong energy of boundaries here it's a really interesting combination of both where i see like group three what needs your attention and it's it's really interesting because i see you getting energy that's similar to group one with their past or childhood energy. And then group two had the queen of swords. So you guys might want to vibe with like one or both of the other groups in different ways um, on like similar experiences. But it's like where you take, you know, when we say in readings, like take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Where there's certain things that happened when you were younger or when you were a child and you feel like, people tried to dim your light or say that you were too curious, too weird, you were asking too many questions, I would say bring that energy back. Whatever they were shaming you for that you take a good look at now, being older, being wiser, being more mature, and certainly with the King of Swords, being more sure of yourself, <laughs> like being way more sure of yourself. That's where I see you at right now and saying, you know, I'm going to walk away from that. You like tried to tell me that I should be ashamed of that. I'm leaving that behind. That doesn't resonate. That doesn't work for me. I'm bringing back this younger version of myself's way of doing this, but also saying like, thank goodness I've grown and learned in other ways. There's things we do as, <laughs> you know, hopefully there's things we did as children or adolescents that we just learned, you know, that's not how I want to do things. <laughs> that's not the way I want to live, like my hormones aren't acting all crazy anymore. <laughs> so maybe I'll like this, this reminds you of a message group two got, but knowing when to put like your mind first and to take a step back and say, oof, I could have a huge reaction right now, or I could take a step back. I could collect my thoughts and make sure I'm not saying anything I'm going to regret. I'm just going to speak on the facts. Like if someone didn't come for my character, like what we said about people taking things, um, getting defensive where 
you know, this child here just meant it out of curiosity. This could even be that you're having some really curious, open-minded conversations with people just to have a conversation, like a very respectful conversation of like, let's say, I don't know, just two people with very different cultural backgrounds or two people who study different things and one person studied like science and one person studied art and you don't have to, like you're learning from each other. You're learning from, well, like, you know, what are some things you learned from your courses or from your books? And this is what I learned about emotions and expression through art. And it's not saying, well, what you learned is stupid and what you learned is stupid and mine is the best. It's really learning from each other. That's that open-minded page of swords energy of, you know, I don't know everything, but I'm the king of swords too. So I do know some things. <laughs> I don't know everything, but I do know something. So like, give me some credit here. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. So take a good look at like, what were you shamed for? Especially if you were being told that you were too quirky, strange, or asking too many questions. You're too curious. Um, get your nose out of the book. Stop asking people questions. Versus if there were some things that you're maybe needing to give yourself a little bit credit for, for how far you've come. Like, let's say on this same note here, if you had a really hard time setting boundaries or if you had a really hard time focusing and if you have come a lot in those areas, giving yourself credit and some appreciation that, you know, my, my inner child should be able to express themselves and have fun and I want to honor them, but I'm you know, not letting them run the show. <laughs> like, just because you want to eat 30 chocolate bars today doesn't mean that's what we're going to do. Like, I might have some things, like some responsibilities, some people to take care of, a job to go to, stuff like that, where King of Swords is like, well, this is what's important to me now, <laughs> or this is what I have to do now. I'm, I'm responsible for some things now. So... We can't just wander around aimlessly all day, every day, but I can let you do that on like Saturdays or something, <laughs> whatever it is. I think they need like an outlet, a creative outlet, um, a new book to read, a new fun conversation, just something to enjoy themselves. I feel like they need, they need a little moment to shine, this younger version of you. Okay, and so the thing about the Seven of Wands is this may pertain to some of you, it usually talks about where you feel like life is stacked against you a little bit or multiple people are coming at you or something versus when you look at who actually has the high ground here, if you stick to what you know, if you stick to your skills. And I think some of these skills are, as we said, coming from this younger version of you. I think you had some assets to work with. That curiosity is coming through. That curiosity, that open mind, very intelligent, kind of like younger you, I think that is one of these strengths that could make whatever you're currently going through a little bit easier, actually. So that is what I have for you, group three. These readings were all super different, <laughs> which is very interesting. Like all very, we got like weirdly specific and different and completely different energy from all the readings. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for coming through group three and I will see you next time.